Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another Jesse Vlog. Um, this one is probably in my top favorites. Uh, it's called Creepy Connie 3 The Creepening with special guest star Sierra McCormick as Creepy Connie and G. Hanalius as, as Mackenzie. I'm here with Kay, and Kay, what did you think of the episode? I thought it was kind of clever. Clever? Uh, yeah. Gave Luke the spotlight. Mm-hmm. So, and it was really, you know, he had the spotlight, Emma had a spotlight. So, once again, it was different stories that were going on at once. That accumulate uh, that... Yeah. They all came, came together. Came together at the end. Yep. So, um, once again, they made it kind of... The main Luke plot... Which is the plot of the episode is, yeah. Um, he he find he meets Mackenzie, who he has, who he has a liking to, and then creepy Connie, well, she pops up out of the bush, creeps him out, kind of looking like that. Oh, who's that guy from Laughing that said, "Interesting, very interesting." Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and then Connie try, and then Connie says, "Like, no, I've changed. I went to boarding school or reform school. What was it? No, she was in boarding school. Boarding school, okay. And, and then that's how Mackenzie is introduced. Yeah, Mackenzie is the was her former roommate, who she spent about ten months talking to, and how she built a." She built a shrine and a failed cloning experiment. Yeah, that surprised Luke. Surprised me. What would you expect from Creepy Connie? Yeah, I don't know. She sure tried a lot of things. And then uh, Luke doesn't believe it. But then Mackenzie starts acting crazy, including uh, threatening to pull out her baby teeth. No, she wanted to give him a necklace of baby teeth, and then, but then she was he about... threw that down, and she's like, well, I can get more teeth. Yeah, that's when she pretended to put the pliers to her mouth. And then uh, it kind of plays like a horror movie. <laughs> so... <coughs> and then Mackenzie leaves, but then... Should we reveal what happens with? Should we reveal what happens at the end for the surprise, or should we leave it alone? Well, before Mackenzie totally, she leaves, but then um, she blogs from someplace in Skypes or Skypes from someplace there. Mm -hmm. Inside his room, yep. under his bed. Yep. Should we leave it at that? Because that's that's when the episode really gets extreme. Or should we should no, we just No, that isn't really extreme because No, no. The the thing with uh Connie afterwards. Should we reveal that or no? What do you mean? The thing with Connie. At the Way at the end with the No, no, after after uh Mackenzie leaves. Oh. Should we reveal that or no? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Connie uh, was playing all of them and hired Mackenzie to be obsessed with Luke. And as a result, uh, scared him all away so she could have Luke tied up for a forced marriage with mannequins. Yep. Mannequins were the relatives. <laughs> Including Minister Chucky from Minnesota. Yeah. That's what she, that's why he was licensed. Instead of being a sack puppet. It's a hand puppet. Yeah. Who she gets into an argument with. Yeah. Which is pretty funny. Uh so that's the A plot. And then there's the B plot involving Emma, uh, 
having to work despite uh, missing a movie in the park thing for, uh, what is it, an alien buddy cop comedy or something? I don't remember. It was different. It sounded like a take on Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, or, uh, no, uh. There's another thing that's like that that's kind of a spoof, but I can't remember it. Huh. Anyway. So, uh, Boomer makes her work. She has to, but then when Zuri and Bertram tell her that the movie is getting incredible and you have to see the, and you have to at least see the ending, she's like, okay, so she leaves for about five or six minutes. And when she comes back, the thing has pretty much been destroyed, basically. Yeah, it was ransacked. Stuff, yeah. You know, food stolen, everything, so... Who would have thought that if you left a food truck alone in New York City in the middle of the night, bad stuff might happen? Yeah, but Bertram was thinking, wow, New Yorkers, you should have left it. That was a joke. I know. And so they have to improvise in order to make some money back. So they make a, a lettuce leaf witch. Yep. Petite leaf witch with confit sauce. Tomato confit and petite leaflet or something. It was a slice of lettuce. With ketchup. Ketchup and smashed potato chip. Yeah. <laughs> That's French for $11. <laughs> And then Boomer gets back. He's angry because his his uh, card has been pretty much destroyed. Ransacked, destroyed, everything. And then he goes to sweep up some, um, or brush off some of the potato chip crumbs. Yeah, and, and Bertram, Bertram says, like, you just lost four bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and then uh, Boomer comes back. And it's revealed that he is uh, Connie's uncle, uh -huh. and pretty much untie, pretty much gets her to untie and pull the duct tape off of everyone. And what I thought was really funny was when people were objecting, she even put duct tape on the mannequins' mouths. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Uh, what did you think? Did you like the episode? Did you see why I liked it? Uh, did you not like it? Yeah, I, I liked the episode, but I think, you know, with the, the rituals at the end, and when the uncle came... What rituals? Wedding rituals. <laughs> when the uncle came and, um, hired Emma back... Yeah. But then he he said to um, to creepy Connie that she had to let hostages go, <laughs> and that she only had three places left in New York City that didn't have a restraining order. Yeah, that she could stand in. So, yeah, it was quite. Yeah, you never want to see anything get that far. Mm-hmm. To like really. You know, hurt people. I mean, they made fun of this, but yeah, there are times that it just totally goes too far. I can totally picture JJ uh, making her bridesmaids have to wear that at either her first, second, third, fourth, or fifth wedding. <laughs> but not her sixth. Well, in on um, the one girl, it was like only on her back. Because she was already tied up. She kept having to go to the bathroom. No, she had to go to the bathroom. Right. Not she kept having to. <coughs> so, if the episode came up on Disney Channel, would you tell people to watch it? I don't know if I would tell people to watch it or not, to be honest with you. What was your favorite line from the show? Or from the episode? Wow. I don't know. The show was filled with them. Right. She's creepy and uh, engineer. 
or whatever. <laughs> or, uh, oh yeah, like a... Time tractor. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite lines was, uh, Hermione for a girl and Lukey Pookie Jr. for a boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of <coughs> interesting, too. The Hermione part is because she's a Harry Potter fan. Ah. I'm saying this because we're reviewing these episodes out of order. We're posting them obviously out of order, and uh, I've seen I I know I I know that she's a Harry Potter fan. Uh, Kay doesn't. Sorry. Okay, so we'll see you with another just we'll see you with another Jesse Vlog soon. Bye. Bye. Catch the bouquet.